Hey there, welcome back to my channel. In the previous episode, we have checked how we can use the array and the slice, right? So let's continue with our episode. And in this episode, we are going to work on map and destruct, right? So at least we can move one step further to write actual code. So let's declare a map. But right before the declaration, let's try to understand what exactly map it is. Map is a kind of, you can say, like dictionary in JavaScript, right? Where it can have a key and value, right? It can have any kind of value, but the key is always has to be string, something like that, right? And uh, there are certain helper functions we are going to use to, to create map. Uh, as like we see in the slice, also we can use some kind of helper function to create slice, right? This is the similar way we are going to create a map right here. So let's try to create a map, just like my wishlist, right? And my wishlist, we are going to use helper function called make, right? Make. And here we, will, we are going to say map, right? What type of data type we are going to use, like uh, it's a kind of string. And what will be will be the value? So this is this is a kind of declaration of the map. So and this is a kind of like key, and this is the value. So value will be like any kind of value. It, it may be integer, it may be string, or it may be something like that way. Right. So let's try to make a kind of string, right? So wishlist certainly it, it, it's going to be a kind of string of wishlist, right? And, and in that case, how we can assign the the value to the map? So in this case, let's say my wishlist key will be first. You can define any kind of name right here, but in this case, let's say my wishlist, my first wishlist will be my first wish will be let's say Mac Pro, right? So this is my first wishlist. Let's say let's assign one more, right? My wishlist going to be like second. Second wishlist going to be like nine hundred billion billion dollar. Yeah, this is my second wishlist as an example. And uh, you can say like you know my my first third wishlist is going to be like third wishlist. It's going to be like a beautiful car. Let's say. Beautiful car. So these are some hypothetical, all right? This is not my wishlist at all. But uh, just for just for trying it out, like what kind of data we can assign it here. So this is our map right now. You can see map has a kind of uh, specific element, all right? This is a key. This is value, right? This is how we are assigning right here. So let's just try to uh, print it out this map, like fmt dot print and here we can say my my wishlist, my wishlist. My wishlist is going to be like hello, and here we can say my wishlist, right? So let's try to um, run here, and you can see like my all the wishlists are are displaying right here along with the key hello. You can see this is a kind of map, and this is the first this is the first key, right? This is the key, and this is hello, and this is the key and hello, something like this way. So it is displaying like this. Now we can see our map is working perfectly, right? So it has a value, we can assign it and we can remove also. So how we can remove it? Removing a certain key and value, it is not, not so complicated in the map, right? So the only thing you need to use some kind of helper function, this is called delete, right? Delete and you can see like delete function is providing already map, what type of map we are going to provide it here in, in, this, in this case, like our map. This is this is called my wishlist, and which element we we or which key exactly we need to remove it. As an example, my third, right? Uh, we we don't want a car, right? So let's say let's try to remove it, right? Then you should suppose to see only two wishlists right here. Can you see? We have two wishlists only, right? And the similar way, it has also other helper function. As an example, get specific value from our wishlist. As an example, my uh, the first my first wish, right? So first wish it will be like my my wishlist. I'm going to give the key name here first. Uh, for, let's do first. Right. So now log print Alan. Let's say first first wish. Yeah, first wish. If you're going to run the application, it will give you only that, that specific value only. Right. You can see Mac Pro. Right. So this is how we can get that specific key elements from here. And uh, why exactly map is map is necessary? Where we are going to use map? So map is it's acting as a kind of dictionary. It's purely dictionary stuff, right? So where certain things, let's say we need to assign some unique value. Let's say uh, there is a kind of product, right? Product can have certain elements you can directly assign, like product, product, product name, product details, etc. It is coming just like dictionary. 
So there are no any kind of like duplicate key will be there. So in that scenario, we can use something like that way. Map is not too complicated. It is just simply keep hello types, all right? So where we can store some kind of the key and against of that the key, we can store some kind of hello. But keep in mind that we cannot keep the duplicate key right here. That is the thing exactly. It does uh, by a dictionary as a kind of nature, right? Now let's move forward to this struct. So right before, right before writing a kind of struct or maybe declaring a struct. So let's see what exactly struct it is, right? So in Go, a struct is a kind of composite data type. That's a kind of group of the variables and fields together uh, with, with, a, with a certain name, right? As an example, you can you can compare with a class. Like class can have also uh, different different property, and property can have different different types. But only difference is like you know, class and the struct. Struct cannot have a similar type of like you know uh, you can say methods. It cannot have methods, right? But the class can have a multiple methods or inheritance or etc. etc. Something like that. We. So this is the this is the basic idea about the destruct. Now let's declare a kind of struct here. So right before declaring a struct, we need to define the struct. So how we can define it? So that definition of the struct will be will be defined just like how the struct will be look like, something like this. So we are going to always use a kind of uh, type keyword to to declare struct, right? In this case, let's say product, right? And product will be a kind of struct. That's a struct. So and in this struct, we can say name, right? Name will be this kind of string, right? And a price, price will be kind of like, you no, know, plot 64, right? So this is the definition of struct. So now declare the struct right here. So let's say var product, product will be a kind of product, right? So this is the declaration right now. And we need to, we need to assign it, right? So how we can assign it? The similar way, just like, you no know, product, will be a uh, product just we did for our, our array you know the similar way but in this case let's say name will be name will be let's say macro right let's say price price will be price will be nine thousand dollar right and here we need to put a kind of comma here right now now our product is declared right this is a kind of struct now let's try to try to print it out Say fmt dot println. This is going to be our product. Product struct will be right. Default parameter we are going to use just like no product. Now this error has gone. Now let's try to spin our application. So you can see like now our struct is a kind of Mac Pro. Its price is nine thousand. Now here we can see we are defining a struct right here. Okay, by giving some kind of property that is going to be like mixing property, right? So, which is going to be like different type of data type. So, name is a string and price is a plot, right? Or maybe something else also it's going to become. And eventually, the, the struct can use the struct also, right? This is how it's going to work. Like, I'm going to show you in a minute, like, how we can uh, use the multiple struct, right? But uh, uh, the basic definition, you can see, we need to we need to define first. Then we need to we need to declare it, right? Then we can assign some value. Otherwise, what we can do other way around, let's say, in the short form also, you can do something like this way. Right, something like this way. This is also gonna work in the same way, right? So now, this struct has a kind of a special capability. While we are we are using for our throughout of the application in in order to parse the data or responding to the data or maybe uh, maybe while you are returning some uh, information to the struct, you know, struct has the capability to uh, transform to the you can say in the session from a data as well as right. So in the specific property, you can define like what exactly. And the struct pill will be while you're returning the struct data, then name pill will be how it will be look like in session, or how it will be look like in the CSB, or how it will be look like in the database pill. Those are the things we can do, right? But right before that, let's try to have a look, very simple thing, like we are going to uh, define one more struct, this, just like, you know, type, type, let's say, uh, details, fine, details, details, fine. So in this case, let's say struct again struct, and struct can have let's say description. This is description is going to be like string, right? And here will be image. Images will be something like string. This is not colon, yeah, string. And these details we can directly use like details, right? So now if you're going to uh, add it right here, let's say details will be what? What details will be? Details will be like details of, right? And this is going to be description. Description will be an 
incredible machine. And here will be we can say images. Images. Right. So now if you spin the application, you can see like it is using this similar kind of structure. Can you see like this is going to be like base uh, all these base products like what we are having direct uh, elements right this is coming right here and this is the details are coming as a kind of nested element right here right this is description like an incredible machine and this is a kind of url we are getting right here so this is how we can use like nested uh, struggle also because why exactly it is extremely necessary while we are writing some kind of like api Right, while well, we are patching some data from somewhere or maybe while we are re responding to our, our application, right? And in the front-end application, then certainly we need to structure, like build the structure of our API, right? In this case, struct is very useful while returning some kind of response, right? So while, while it comes to responding to something, right? While it comes to provide some kind of JSON output from the struct, struct is very efficient to do that, right? So in that case, what we can do? So instead of that, against of that specific property, we can we can define the how exactly the key will be look like in the session, right? So now if we return this data, then by default it will be coming just like this, right? So you can see in the in the log uh, here uh, the key is not there, but still the key will be something like name, right? Name will be this one, price will be this one, and it will come something like camel case, right? But we don't want that, right? It will be it it has to be. Uh, in a meaningful way, we need to provide it while while we're returning to our API. So then, with the help of backtick, we can just write what exactly uh, it will be look like, just like an session or maybe an XML or YAML or whatever we you can just uh, do it right here. So in in commonly used uh, the attributes just like session and XML, right? YAML very very less uh, we are using, but let's uh, try to use the session and you can provide a name right here, right? So you can see like we do with the help of two backtick. Uh, and then colon then with, with the help of like double quotation you can provide the name so instead of name you can provide any kind of like uh, let's say product name product name then this name property will convert to this specific product name key while you are reading this specific key from our front end or maybe some some consumer from the client side then the JSON response will be coming something like that way right so now let's keep it as a kind of default a parameter, something like this. And this is also going to be price. And this is also backtick JSON details. And the similar way we can do do here as well as right? JSON description and JSON like images. Right. Now you can see here in the details also it is nested, but still it will come something like this way. Now while we will return the data to our front end or maybe some client, then they will receive some kind of this kind of structure in the as JSON. Right. But uh, how we can convert this JSON stuff from the struct, then that we will look into our, our upcoming episodes because that is not a kind of part of uh, this uh, composite data types, right? This is a kind of functional component stuff while we will be going to work on the functions. At the time, we will show you how we can convert all these things to JSON, right? But this is the this is the flexible way of working with the struct, right? And one more thing we can do, let's say we are we're going to declare a struct right here, let's say our product right here, right? then this is we need to remove it from here then we can we can reassign the stuff like some of the property right here let's say product let's say uh, name or title maybe right name let's say mac macbook pro right so this is also we can assign right here can you see it is not complaining anymore right so while if you're going to run this application then instead of macro it will going to be give you the macbook pro can you see yeah this is the way it's gonna work. Perfect. So I think you have a kind of good understanding at this moment, like how map and the struct is working.